come to the 16th of June. So 16th of June, 2023, they left Newfoundland um, and uh, they were on uh, the Polar Prince, which was a ship, you know, was taking them out there. Um, they got there um, on the 17th of June where they were going to like go diving, um, diving in the submersible, obviously. Um, Hamish Harding apparently posted on Facebook, um, due to the worst winter in Newfoundland in 40 years, this mission is likely to be the first and only crewed mission to the Titanic in 2023. A weather window has just opened up and we're going to attempt a dive tomorrow. Um, it was supposed to start around 4 a.m., um, well, 8 a.m., uh, I think our time. I don't know. 4 a.m. whatever time it is in the middle of the bloody ocean or whatever I I don't know, um and then they sort of they went down the dive they started the dive um on the 18th of June at 9:30 uh, a.m. Newfoundland daylight time, um and for an hour and a half um they were going all as normal everything was fine they were communicating every 15 minutes but then after um at 11:15 a.m. um communication stopped no more communication um again at this point. The people, you know, on the ship were probably like, eh, well, this happens all the time, whatever, should be fine. Um, <clears throat> so they were like, we'll just leave it. So people were asking, oh, why did they, why did they not tell anyone about this until, you know, till like hours later? Well, it's because this happened all the time. They were waiting until um, they were expected to resurface. That was at half past four. Um, when that didn't happen, they told the Coast Guard um, and <laughs> they still had, um, they had like 96 hours of air, as we've, as we've spoken about. Um but um, that was from when it set out, which meant that um, on the twenty second of June, twenty twenty three, um, that would be when the uh, that would be when the air ran out. So they started the trip on um, the eighteenth of June, and the by the twenty second, if they were still in it, even if even if they were at the surface, they'd be dead. Because so that was they'd Monday to Thursday. Yeah, Monday in, to Thursday in the UK at least. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that 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 was all going. They told the Coast Guard. Um, the Coast Guard. Now, what they do is they they will scramble to protect like basically save anyone that's that's having trouble in in the water like it's there's an international sort of um ag- agreement right that it doesn't really matter um whose ship it is um in sort of international waters like you go and you go and help mm. the nearest ships go and help um so on top of that you may have heard that the, the navy um detected something they just they they detected a sound that um essentially would indicate an explosion or an implosion um that was a few hours after the titan uh, submerged essentially right mm. so the navy um the navy found out about this uh, they had a look at it they sent that information to the coast guard so i mean they knew and and also james cameron apparently found out about this um pretty early on you know, um, it, amongst the sort of deep sea diving community, yes. this sort of spread around. So James Cameron, from you know, from the start, was like, "These guys are dead. This is pretty sad, um, and their families are worrying." And OceanGate isn't saying anything, and no one's saying, you know, coming out and saying, "Hey, we're looking for wreckage. We're not looking for people." You know, um, so that's that's kind of what happened there, right? That was up until the point till we till they basically went down and found out that it had in fact imploded. So I kind of want to talk about that because that seems to be where I think most people don't understand exactly what's going on. Now, if we if we think about everything that we've been speaking about up until then, um, you know, up until now rather, we know that there's a lot of pressure on the outside of this sort of vehicle, of the submersible, um, pushing in, right? Basically, all of that water is... is think about it like... Think about it um, like holding a bottle of like a water bottle right like a a plastic water bottle squeeze all the water out it's just air on the inside right Mm -hmm. now if you take your hands and you try and cover the entire water bottle and just try and squeeze it right that's what's going on there now if you've got a sturdy bottle like if you've say got a metal bottle you're going to struggle to squeeze that in got a plastic bottle you can just crush it immediately Mm -hmm. right now what what's going to happen is if there's if there's a fault right um then then the integrity is compromised the the ship can't like you know keep all of that stuff out it's just going to go in it's going to crush in very very quickly so i mean if we if we think about sort of um the timings of this uh human sort of reaction times are in the sort of hundreds of milliseconds mm-hmm. um as far as i'm aware but sort of hundreds uh, roughly so um, you put if something happens in 200 milliseconds you think it happened instantly yeah so, it, so it, something of, instant is, yeah. is still a few hundred milliseconds yeah, yeah. A couple, or mm, 100 to 200 yeah right yeah. that range right um now this implosion happened like in a millisecond 
four <gasps> milliseconds. Yeah, it, very quickly. Oh my god! No, exactly. So people are asking. People have been asking. Hey, so how did this work? Like, did they know? When, did they know anything was going on? Um, did they? Um, did they feel anything? Would they have had like headaches or anything? Um, well. It's kind of unlikely, right? What what would have happened is they would have, like, I mean, it, it would have just happened instantly. And again, this isn't just like water rushing in. I, I feel people are going to be thinking about this as a sinking ship. It's not a sinking ship, okay? Because you, a sinking ship is near the surface and water's being pushed in, you know, as the thing's going down. So you see water rushing in, rushing in like that really quickly. No. No, this is, there's so much more pressure here at three, like at, at 3000 meters, um, like, or, or you know, um, at however deep they were, the, the pressure is enormous. I mean, I could, I could give you, <laughs> I could give you numbers, but it's not really gonna, it's not really gonna compete in your head. It's right? like hundreds of atmospheres, isn't it? Yeah. Like at, tw- at 12 and a half thousand feet, it's, um, more than four, uh, 400, 4,400, uh, PSI, um, basically if there's if there's any sort of like if there's any sort of imperfection there um and the integrity is broken implosion everything just yeah. like the the water like the water's constantly pushing against the the hull right and if the hull just like has like a slight little break boom yeah it's like uh, if you how do I put this it's almost as though like think about like having holding like sort of matchsticks between your hands and you're really pushing like mm-hmm. pushing in right you're, like a matchstick between your hands you're pushing it in pushing it in if you've got it perfectly level let's say let's say a pencil for anyone watching um for anyone listening just like you know um imagine me holding a pencil between both my hands or go and watch on youtube so <laughs> You've got this pencil, right? Now, look, if you were to sort of, like, I'm pushing this quite hard. If you were to tap this pencil, you know, like, tap it, tap it in my hands, like, go, go, go. If you t- oh my gosh, oh. right? And, like, immediately my hands come together, right? Yeah. Now, this is a sharp, this is a sharpish pencil. It's really stabbing my hand, so I didn't want to press too hard. <laughs> but the point is that, like, there's constant pressure going inwards. And if there's a slight fault, boom, it, it, it doesn't stop. It's already pushing. It just crushes the entire thing. Now, this this kind of implosion is insane, right? The water is moving so fast. These people would have been torn to shreds immediately. Uh, the the heat inside of there from the air being compressed because the air would have been essentially right. The air is is, is under sort of normalish pressure because the outs the hull is sort of protecting it from the pressure of the water. But all of that water pressure on the air makes it compress really really quickly and so it gets like there's it, there's almost like a sort of um like really really r- sudden rise in heat so they wouldn't have felt anything this happened so so quickly that they couldn't have felt anything um they wouldn't have really known like that you know that it died it's like if, if the sort of let's say the sun exploded right we wouldn't know that it happened until like eight minutes after it happened but by the time that's happened it's like like instant death mm-hmm. like not even enough to know that you're that you're dying um and again as i said the, there's there's an incredible amount of heat re- sort of released um from the, the, like the compression of that air so they would have just been completely shredded think about a bomb right a bomb pressure wave outwards an explosion is a pressure wave outwards right and you can get if you get caught up in that pressure wave you can be torn to shreds um and you, or you could be hit by shrapnel that's being carried by that pressure wave or you can become shrapnel that's being carried by the pressure wave because it rips you apart and continues pushing you outwards it's kind of similar except it's going in it's going inwards right so they're they're just immediately entirely just gone nothing is going to be left there they are like disintegrated atomized these guys there's no bodies, right? We're not looking for corpses. There, there's nothing. There's maybe if you've got like I don't know a gold filling or a wedding ring or something that might survive it. Some like metal object, some really sturdy. But they are they're nothing, right? Like that is an incredible, incredible like force. It's an incredible amount of pressure just immediately crushing from every angle. Um, and there would also then be apparently some kind of, I think, explosion due to the sort of, um, how do I put this, the sort of um, outside of uh, like some this other parts of the submersible kind of like being torn apart and exploding. So the implosion could then trigger like a slight explosion, which would blow sort of like all of the debris all over the shop. Um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, the people, I mean, there, there are obviously five people that died here. Um, one of them was 19 and only went because his dad 
wanted him to go and it was Father's Day, which is really bloody sad, right? I mean, Stockton Rush, dude, like, the man basically died by his own hand. By his own sort of negligence, he lost his life, but also took the lives of others. And the teenager, that is absolutely tragic. The others that paid two and a half, uh, $250,000 and, and knew that it was flouting, like, y- y- you must look into this, even the slightest bit, and see that it's flaunting all sort of safety precautions. They're just casting them to the wind. It, it truly is just just horrible um what what happened but yeah as i said you know um it's it 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 was it was immediately it was immediate it was instant there's no sort of like there you know people have been asking so i think trini asked could they feel the pressure before it imploded (laughs) if you're feeling that you can't feel the pressure um because the the hull is keeping is basically keeping it out right the hull yeah. is holding back all of that water away from you so you don't have time to feel the pressure because if you feel the pressure you're you're dead it, the pressure hits you faster than and, and destroys you faster than a signal can be sent to your brain and your brain can understand it you know what I, mean? I think it's also worth it to mention that if you somehow found yourself floating at that pressure, you yeah. also wouldn't be able to survive. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Um, like it's not just the imploding <laughs> ship; it's that you, even even if the ship wasn't there, if the ship vanished in an instant, um, you would also die quicker than you could possibly experience it. Now, the strangest thing about that is that there are actually animals living down there oh, yeah. that don't die because they're um, adapted for because that. Adap- yeah. yeah, they have like special proteins that hold the structure of their cells in place. Like it's really, it's very interesting. But if you bring them up to this to lower pressure, I'm pretty sure a lot of them do die right. because they're adapted for that that pressure. Yeah. yeah. Um, the difference here is, I think what people are not necessarily what people 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 don't necessarily get is that um, is that like it's not a case of um, it's not a case of you know just oh there's lots of pressure like on an airplane. Like you know, because airplanes kind of the lack of that sort of lack of pressure, where the pressure inside the craft is uh, air pressure inside the craft is higher than outside. Right? It's not just oh, there's a lot of pressure on you; you're being kind of squashed. The implosion is is the sudden change of pressure. You've got normal ish atmospheric pressure in inside, and then three thousand like meters of water um, pressure outside. And that sudden change is what causes the explosion. Um, the, not the explosion, the implosion. The implosion um, is so fast it rips everything apart, all that sort of stuff, right? And as you said, yeah, if you were at that depth, you wouldn't be able to survive, but it would, wouldn't be for the same sort of reason. Do you know what I mean? Yes, like, but it would be instant as well. well that, I mean, point. if you yes. were instantly transported there, it would mm, it would be pretty... I mean, it would be pretty... Inst- it, it's... it's this is really difficult to talk about because it's that it's becoming an imaginary thing of like I'm just suddenly transported to the bottom there, yeah. but there'd be water display. It, it's difficult to like really conceptualize. But like you know, if you think about it, if it's if it, if you go down that deep, you're not going to be able. Your muscles aren't going to be able to like you're not going to be able to expand your lungs, right? Mm. You're not going to be able to like breathe in. You're just going to have everything squashed. Out of you. You're going to be crushed essentially, right? Um, but it's not being crushed by that um, kind of water pressure isn't the same as being torn apart by the implosion Mm -hmm. um, because the implosion is so, so quick whereas the water pressure is just kind of like it's just trying to reach that sort of equilibrium Um, so no, they wouldn't have felt they wouldn't have felt pressure before it imploded because um, the implosion is that sudden change of pressure Um, and people are asking how is it legal to send that underwater when it's clearly so risky? It's because it's it's because it's well in part because it's international waters um and part because it's it's not um it's it's kind of like an exploratory like an experimental vehicle it's not um you know and i think uh similarly to how uh, you know all of the um apollo um spacecrafts were experimental yeah laws are kind of a bit funky when you get out to that sort of international no one owns it kind of area but also signing a bunch of different forms like yeah i i, I agree to this i agree to that blah 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 you know all of that sort of stuff um it really shouldn't be legal. It really shouldn't have been legal. I mean, yeah. we may even find out that it that it was a bit dodgy, but yeah, no, I mean, who like who really bloody knows how they managed to to get away with this because this is just very obvious endangerment. Mm-hmm.